During this conference, uh, Rabbi Eric Yaffe has received and will yet receive well-deserved tributes for his numerous achievements and contributions to our movement. I wholeheartedly agree, Eric, with all of the accolades, some of which I haven't yet heard. <laughs> but for me, a rabbi teaches not only by what he s does, not only by what he says, but by who he is. In the final analysis, the life he lives is his most effective sermon. Eric has two attributes which make him stand out as a human being and as a Jew. The first attribute is Eric's integrity personal, professional, intellectual integrity. I've worked with many persons, you heard about that uh, this morning, who hold positions of responsibility as heads of organizations, similar to the position of Eric. They are invariably subject to pressures from staff, from lay people, with conflicting views, competing interests, legitimate jockeying for positions of responsibility, competitive institutional and personal aspirations. The result, the leader is often forced to take a stand against his better judgment. Not with Eric Yaffe. You know where he stands and where you stand with him. With Eric, there's no sham, no ostentation. In over 30 years of working with Eric, in close partnership, and on many controversial issues, he mentioned that this morning, in some of which we held divergent views. I never once had occasion to question his motivation. He never tried to win favor, and he never tried to cover his hide. Throughout his life, both, both private and public, Eric fulfilled the dictum of the Salanta Rebbe, Israel Lipkin, the 19th century founder and spiritual father of the Musar movement, the movement for ethical Judaism, who said, Rav she'en cholkin alav bekilato, eno begeder rav. A rabbi whose congregation does not disagree with him, he's not a rabbi. Rav ha-mefachet bibnehem, a no begetter adam. And a rabbi who is afraid of his congregation should not be considered a mensch. And Eric is a rabbi and he's a mensch. <clears throat> a good rabbinic leader lives with challenge, with tension, with dissent. David Saperstein, my successor, mentioned this morning that the Talmud is filled permeated with conflict. 
That, my friends, for me, is the essence of Eric's leadership and what he has taught this movement. Now, the second attribute which characterizes Eric's leadership is his profound love of everything Jewish. The Jewish people, Judaism as a faith, as he observed it creatively, Jewish and Hebrew culture. He's one of the few rabbis I know, one of the few American rabbis, who is totally fluent in the Hebrew language. He reads the Hebrew press daily. He could read it in English. Ours is printed in English. He reads it in Hebrew. And is thoroughly conversant with the major developments and the major issues in Israeli society. As the leader of our American movement, he made regular trips to Israel in order to meet with the key political and intellectual leadership and to bring to bear the perspective of our American and our world movement. And when he was critical of Israeli domestic policy, his views carried weight. You know why? Because Israeli leadership recognized that his criticism was motivated by what we call in Hebrew, Yisurim Shel chastisements, but chastisements of love. In Hebrew we say, Ichpatlo, he cares deeply. Eric cares deeply about being Jewish. And that is why Ichpatlanu, the Gabav, that is why we care deeply about him. Eric has a major blessing. His wife, Amy, a loving partner who shares his commitments to the Jewish people and to Hebrew culture. She and Eric have raised highly intelligent, successful children who perpetuate their parents' Jewish and general values. Like Amy and Eric, they are fluent in Hebrew. In the Tanhuma, we are taught, Bishut banim avotehem mit kabdim. It is through the merit of children that parents are accorded honor. Eric, want to come up? I just whispered to him, I really love you. Eric, it's now my privilege, on behalf of the World Union, to bestow on you the Micah Award. It is based on a verse of the prophet Micah, which you personify, and which you have fulfilled throughout your life. Where is the... I hope we're not Indian givers here. Higid l'cha adam, matov umaranai doresh mimcha. Ki masot mishpat, vavat chesed, vatsnea lechet, imelo hecha. It has been told to you, O oh man, what is good and what the Eternal requires of you to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. It says, presented to Rabbi Eric H. Yaffe as president of the URJ for 15 years, Rabbi Eric H. Yaffe has been a distinguished voice for Reform Judaism in North America and around the world. With passion and courage like that of the prophet Micah, 
He has been a champion for social justice, for interfaith dialogue, and ever higher standards of Jewish education for all members of our congregations. And as a true lover of Zion, Rabbi Yaffe has devoted his life to the cause of Israel and progressive Judaism in the Jewish state. And this is a talit on which is inscribed the phrase uh, from Micah. Eric? Thank you, Jim. Thank you. I am um, overwhelmed in every way. I love Dick Kirsch. Expressed that this morning. And um, let me tell you what I'm going to do now. I have five minutes. I'm going to stick to that. I was supposed to attend your convention in uh, February. My wife got sick. I had a 45, 50 minute speech. So what I've decided to do is give you the five minute version. <laughs> Every lay person now is saying, why don't rabbis always do that? Um, and uh, I looked over my notes. In that speech, I talked about Rabbi Hirsch. Since I only have five minutes and I did that this morning, I'm not going to do it now, but you know how I feel. I talked about Rabbi Stephen Fuchs. He's going to be an extraordinary president of the World Union. Extraordinary. I talked about my love for Israel and Israel's place in the World Union. The international reform movement represented by the World Union has a long and diverse agenda but Israel will always be at the center of that agenda. And just as Israel, for all its flaws, continues to unite the Jewish world, so too will Israel, for all its flaws, continue to unite the reformed Jewish world. And I will say much more about Israel in my Shabbat morning sermon. I talked about developments in Europe. I want you to keep in mind, you're just getting part of the sermon. But I talked about development in Europe. It's unusual to read an article about European Jewry that does not predict its imminent demise. Source after source suggests that the combination of demographic decline, anti-Israel sentiment, growing anti-Semitism spells the end of a meaningful Jewish experience in Europe. I am not an expert in such matters, but I must tell you, I do not agree. There are many opportunities and reason for hope Young Jews have brought new life to major European cities. Vibrant Jewish life is to be found in London and Budapest and Berlin, and there are encouraging trends in Reform congregations in both Eastern and Western Europe. Reform Judaism was born in Europe, and two centuries later, European intellectual currents animate our religious practice and give shape to our religious thinking. If the World Union is to be all that it ultimately can be, it will require the inspiration and cooperation of an assertive, influential European partner. That's my hope. Much has already been done. In building on current achievements, I know that such a, a partner will come into being with an active European rabbinical organization and an active European congregational body. I talked about Chabad. What is new in the last 10 years is that in much of the Jewish world outside of North America, Chabad is becoming the mainstream orthodox branch of Judaism. So what does this mean for us? It means to state the obvious that Chabad will become ever more influential and that for the foreseeable future we will live alongside each other with Chabad and reform often being the two primary expressions of Jewish tradition. It means that we will offer the Jewish world two radically different models of Jewish life and congregational life. The Chabad model is the rabbi-centered shul of Eastern Europe built around the charisma of the holy man. The reform model proceeds from the premise that there is no special class of religious people, 
and that while we learn from our rabbis, seek their guidance, value their leadership, our congregations are rooted in principles of cooperation and covenant. We do not shrink from comparisons and competition with Chabad. We welcome it. We see the dialectic between reform and Chabad as a blessing. The Jewish world is strengthened by a vigorous debate between their vision of the Jewish world and our liberal vision of the Jewish world. And finally, last point, I talked about the need for American Jews. I'm leaving the Canadians out of this. I talked about the need for American Jews to overcome the provincialism that has so long been fundamental to our Jewish mindset and that is even more pronounced in times like these, times of economic distress. What we hear, sometimes openly, sometimes less so, yes, Reform Jews everywhere are important, but yes, I, the Jewish world is important, but right now we just, we have to worry about our own. That's what we hear. Those who argued for, argue for an inward-looking Judaism are disastrously wrong. Self-absorbed religions like self-absorbed people wither and die. At a time of financial hardship, for the broader society and for the synagogue, young people and older ones will not be drawn to our ranks by a narrow view of the Jewish mission. Let's worry about ourselves is not a rallying cry. It's a formula for suicide. Yes, we must turn to Torah and mitzvah for sure. We must focus on Jewish learning, experiencing, and doing. But make no mistakes, our national groupings are not enough. Our future rests on our ability to teach a child to see herself as part of an ancient people and its memories, to teach that child to see and feel the drama and grandeur of the Jewish people, which is an international people with the state of Israel at its core, and to see the reform movement as the conscience and the animating liberal force of that people. It is our task at the Union, the College Institute, the CCAR, WRJ, and the World Union above all, to relentlessly hammer home this message, to identify with reformed Jews wherever they may be found, to raise the banner of peoplehood and to combat the isolationists in our midst. That's why the work that you do is so important, and that's why I am honored to accept this award. Thank you very much. Eric, is this yours? Eric, is this yours?